Today I'll show you how to make the perfect cup of coffee at home. It's easier than you think. Hi, I'm Soon and I'm a food geek. First, let me talk about what makes coffee taste like coffee and how everything works together to get the perfect cup of coffee. The chemistry of coffee is intricate, involving an elaborate interplay of thousands of different compounds. These compounds largely determine its unique taste, captivating aroma and stimulating physiological effects. The primary components include caffeine, chlorogenic acids, and a host of volatile compounds, each playing a pivotal role in making coffee a beloved beverage worldwide. Caffeine, a natural stimulant, is a predominant component of coffee and a significant reason for its worldwide consumption. It influences the central nervous system, enhancing alertness and combating fatigue. Another important constituent of coffee is chlorogenic acids. These polyphenols contribute to coffee's characteristic bitterness and are recognized for their antioxidant properties, potentially offering health benefits such as reducing inflammation and balancing blood sugar. However, the magic of coffee's aromatic profile emerges during roasting. As coffee beans are heated, the Maillard reaction, a chemical reaction between amino acids and reducing sugars, produce many volatile compounds. These compounds interact to create coffee's enticing, warm, and complex aromas. Finally, the brewing process is a critical stage where these components locked within the roasted beans are extracted into hot water. The extent and the manner of extraction greatly influences the flavor strength and balance in the final cup of coffee. In essence, the chemistry of coffee is an extraordinary dance of natural compounds and human intervention, resulting in a beverage that has captivated our senses and hearts for centuries. So when it comes to brewing, what factors influence the taste of the resulting cup? One, the bean. Where the bean was grown and how it was processed makes a huge difference in the taste. Coffee grown at higher altitudes tends to mature more slowly, producing beans with more acidity, brighter flavors, and a cleaner taste. In contrast, beans grown at lower altitudes often have a more robust, full-bodied, and less acidic profile. The soil's minerals and nutrients can influence the coffee's flavor. For instance, volcanic soils like those in parts of Ethiopia and Guatemala can contribute to the coffee's unique mineral and fruity notes. Regions with distinct rainy and dry seasons can produce beans with more pronounced flavors. Temperature, humidity, and the amount of sunlight can all impact the growth of the coffee cherries and therefore the taste of the beans. The method used to process the coffee after harvesting, such as wet, dry, or honey processing, can impact its taste. For example, dry processed beans often have fruitier, bolder flavors, while wet processed beans might be cleaner and brighter. Two, the roast. Light roast. Beans that are roasted to a light brown color and the roast is stopped before the second crack. These roasts often allow the intrinsic flavors of the bean reflective of its origin to shine through. They typically possess more acidity and may exhibit floral, fruit, or grain notes. Medium roast. These beans are roasted until just after the first crack or early into the second crack. The acidity is balanced and the coffee develops flavor introduced by roasting like caramel or toast. Dark roast. Beans are roasted well into the second crack, resulting in a darker color and a shiny, oily surface. The flavors of the origin becomes muted, replaced by bold flavors from the roasting process, like chocolate, nuts, or even smoky notes. The coffee will generally be more full-bodied and less acidic. Roast profile. This refers to how a bean is roasted over time. Two beans can be roasted to the same final color but can taste different based on how quickly they were heated, how long they were held at a specific temperature, and the cooling process. Three, grind size. The size of your coffee grounds can significantly 
influence the taste. Coarse grounds are generally used for methods like French press, where the coffee and water steep together for several minutes. On the other hand, finer grounds used for espresso, where hot water is forced through the coffee quickly. A medium grind is often used for drip coffee makers and for pour overs. Too fine of a grind for a slow brew method can tend to over extraction, making the coffee taste bitter. Conversely, too coarse of a grind for a fast brew method may result in under extraction, leading to a weak sour flavor. Four, water temperature. The temperature of the water used for brewing also affects extraction. The ideal range is usually between 90 to 96 degrees Celsius, about 195 to 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Water that's too hot can overextract the coffee, leading to a bitter taste, while water that's too cool may not result in enough, resulting in a flat or weak flavor. 5. Brewing time. The duration that the water is in contact with the coffee grounds also influences extraction. For example, espresso requires a brief high pressure extraction of 20 to 30 seconds, whereas French press would steep for about four minutes. Too long brewing can cause over extraction and too short can lead to under extraction. Six, coffee to water ratio. The amount of coffee used in relation to water can alter the strength and flavor of the brew. A typical starting point is one to 15 ratio of coffee to water by weight. More coffee will result in a more potent and potentially more bitter brew, while less coffee can lead to a weaker, possibly more acidic cup. Seven, water quality. Your water quality and mineral content can also affect coffee's flavor. Coffee is mostly water after all. Too pure water can lead to flat tasting coffee, while water with too many minerals can overshadow the coffee's natural flavors. Many coffee experts recommend using filtered water for brewing. Now you understand how the different factors affect the taste of your coffee. And now I will present two separate but straightforward methods to make coffee at home. Both ways require an expensive gear that would not even buy a regular coffee brewer. More on this during the recipes. If you'd like to support the channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You can also buy some merch. Use the super thanks or use the links for tools and ingredients in the description. Those were the words. These are the recipes. There's a link in the description to the recipes on my website. First, I will show you how to make V60 coffee, a pour over coffee. You will need the following. A V60 dripper, some size O2 filters, a kettle, a scale and a timer. If you want to use freshly ground coffee, you need a grinder. I have this excellent hand grinder. I've linked all of the items in the description. Note that those are affiliate links, so I will get some money if you buy through the link. Then you will also need some coffee. I'm using beans, but you can use pre-ground coffee. Just make sure it's a medium fine grind or that it says pour over on the package. If you want the best cup, freshly ground coffee is the way to go. On this Harrier grinder, I turn the wheel all the way closed and then I open it with six clicks, giving the perfect medium fine grind. Then measure out 15 grams of coffee beans, put them in the grinder. And grind them. Boil enough water for a cup and for rinsing the filter. 400 milliliters or two cups should be enough. Put the filter in the V60 and pour some boiling water into it. Wet the whole filter. This prevents a papery taste from getting into your coffee. Discard the water in the cup and pour the grounds into the filter. Make a little well in the middle. Turn on the scale. I use the swan neck pitcher, but you can pour it from the kettle. It'll be fine. Start the timer and pour 30 grams of water, about double the bean's weight. And oops, I overshot a bit. When the timer hits 30 seconds, pour water until you hit 150 grams on the scale.
When the timer hits 1 minute and 15 seconds, pour water until the scale reaches 250 grams. Make sure to pour around the edges to get the grounds on the sides of the filter. Swirl it around while extracting to get the taste from all the grounds. Your perfect cup of coffee is ready when the timer hits 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Enjoy your coffee! You won't even need milk since it's so clean and smooth. Alright, the other method uses an AeroPress brewer. You will need the following. An AeroPress brewer, a cup to brew into, a kettle, a scale and a timer, and some coffee. Again, beans are better because the oils with all those volatile compounds don't have time to dissipate and will make it into your cup. That makes a huge difference. If you use a Hario hand grinder, close it completely and open it with six clicks. Measure out 14 grams of coffee beans. Check out this coffee bean container I designed and 3D printed. Isn't it gorgeous? Grind the coffee beans. Place your cup on the scale. Now set up the AeroPress. I'm using a metal filter, but if you're using a paper filter, you will need to wet it. Pour the ground coffee into the AeroPress and place it on the cup. Turn on the scale and boil some water. When boiling, pour 200 grams of water into the AeroPress. Then start the timer. Start three times. Take the cup off the scale. Place the plunger on the top of the AeroPress, press it down a bit and pull it up to create a vacuum that keeps the coffee inside the AeroPress. When the timer reaches one minute, take off the plunger and give it a good stir. Then put the plunger back on and press it down all the way. Don't press hard, just let the weight of your hands do the work. There we go. Now we just need a cookie to go with this, huh? Enjoy your perfect cup of coffee. Both of these methods are favorites of mine and it doesn't take long to make the perfect cup. With both recipes, I've tried to aim for a happy medium. If you like your coffee more robust, I'd recommend adding a bit more grounds. Or if you want a little less full bodied, I'd suggest adding a bit fewer grounds, keeping all the other variables the same. Have fun experimenting with finding your perfect cup. I hope you learned something today. See you next time.